All right, guys, I'm gonna do a couple of quick little videos here on my portable solar generators slash power boxes. Um, the two on the outsides have solar charge controllers, so technically those are solar generators. This one in the middle does not. I don't have, it can, I mean, it would be very easy to put one on it. I just don't have one technically on there. So technically that one's just a power station, portable power station, but. This one was the first one I built, um, built in one of these bigger um, ammo boxes, dry boxes. You can find these a lot in the boating section, RV section. Um, they have the little compartment on top, which in this one is where I put all of my outputs. So basically your main, you have, this was just a cheap little voltmeter that I had laying around. A lot of this stuff was parts pieces I had laying around so this was basically kind of how I taught myself this is also built on 18650 a 4s it's either a 7p or 8p I can't remember um 18650 uh DIY battery pack I'll show you that in a second when I open it up um or show you what I can of it it's all covered but anyway Everything in here has got a switch so I can turn it on or off. Basically, I leave that one off, on so when I turn it on, I immediately know my voltages and stuff. This little switch is for the solar charge controller that is inside, just so it's not hooked up all the time and creating parasitic draw. This powers the standard 2.1 amp USBs. Um, I did put on a couple little LED floodlights so those are on that switch i need to label all these but i didn't i know what they are this switch is runs my sae port um, this switch is for the banana jacks that switch is for the 12 volt and then of course this little toggle switch is for the voltmeter so that is the outputs this is the main insides so there is all the wiring, my fuse block, little negative distribution block down there. Um, the 12 volt power, basically what I was running into when we would go camping and trying to run my CPAP off of this with this being a 4S pack, it runs at 15, 16 volts, which was too much for my CPAP. So it would basically not turn itself on or it would Basically, it would go into error mode, saying that basically it was over voltages. So I bought just one of the cheap little butt converters and so that I could kick this down to, um, I think I set it at like 13, 5, 14 volts, something like that, so that my CPAP will work out of that 12 volt pack. So that's how all that is. I know it's messy, but I did put everything on some XT60 so that I can pull all of this out of here. This is the harness that goes out and feeds the lights. This is the, uh, what is the brand, the Win, Wincog, Wincong, um, 20 amp programmable charge controller. Um, I used this one basically because I could set this, I can set the parameters in here to be able to work with charging 18650s. Most of the cheap, little PWM chargers like this are not programmable. So um, I can't remember if it was freely roaming or um, Jehu Garcia, one of those guys, I think had a video on using this particular controller and being able to program it for 18650s. So that's what I did. This switch runs up there to the switch. Um, got a couple of MC4s. I've got a solar briefcase that I built out of two older 55 watt um, rigid panels. I just basically put hinges on each side, made a briefcase out of it. Um, it's in my camper, so I, I don't have that here to show you. Um, here's the battery pack. It is all covered in duct tape, don't judge. Um, there it is, I've got board, thin board underneath um, to protect it. Basically, I built this myself using a whole slew of recycled and reclaimed 18650s. So I built a pack myself, built my own um, main bus bars. I used 30 gauge wire to basically 
uh, connect each cell, both positive and negative side are used using 30 gauge to connect them to the main bus bars so that they are basically each cell is self fusing. So if anything happens, it just immediately pops that 30 gauge wire. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. Everything's been working great. I've, I've used the heck out of this pack and never had an issue. So, um, I did wrap it in some, some board, little thin, I don't know, it's like a waxed kind of cardboard, I think, but I don't remember technically I built this like three years ago. So, um, it is all wrapped up in there to keep it all protected and keep me from banging around. My th original thoughts in using this bigger box is I was going to build a second pack and basically double my capacity. Um, I haven't ran into an issue where this wasn't enough power yet, so I never got around to building it. Like I said, I've got enough 18650s over there because that's just, I mean, there's more down in there below. I could obviously do that, um, or I could order more cells if I wanted to and build some new ones. But anyway, that one works. These are the LEDs for the front. I've got a little bag down here that just has a bunch of various USB cables and charging cables and stuff we're using. So my original thought was that this would ride up front. These would be folded down out of the way. I'd have another pack right in there. Um, so I do have some extra. I'd also, I also tossed in, like when we go camping, I've got a little LED string lights, stuff like that, that I would just toss in here that we would set up and use around the camp for ambient lighting and so on and so forth. So that was the first one that I built. Um, and it has served me just fine for the last couple of years, camping, stuff like that. Everything basically stays... I'm going to use the word water resistant because obviously nothing is waterproof. This is obviously not waterproof, but it is protected. So it could probably sit out in the rain and be fine. So anyway, that was the first one I built. This is the second one I built here not too long ago. This is um, one of the little Plano uh, cheap little ammo cans. My kids did some little finger painting on it for me for Father's Day. So I figured this was cool way to use this and build it so this one is super simple just got the main switch your voltmeter sorry i'm getting a little reflection i've got my fluorescent or my led lights are right above where i'm trying to film here i'm sure you can see the reflections but so anyway got the voltage meter um i did swap out when i bought this four pack on amazon it came with the standard you know mounting rings whatever so I just took them all out of here, didn't use that, didn't need it. I did, however, swap out. It had just the standard 2.1 amp charger like I have in that box. I chose to swap it out for the QC3 and power delivery port because my wife and I both have iPhones. We both have MacBooks. My kids both have iPads. Um, so basically, pretty much most of the electronics we have can all use qc3 or power delivery so that just made more sense and then i have the 12 volt here so i could obviously use this to power my cpap or i've even got some other 12 volt things when we go camping stuff like like this heated blanket that runs on 12 volts um, you can also just use heating pads that run on um, 12 volts stuff like that they make little you know, like even pet beds, stuff like that, that are all 12 volts. So, um, basically that's all that's on this one. Other than I put in an XT60 right there that basically goes in through its own fused separate connection straight to the battery. And that is basically used for charging. So, um, I, my charger, I just put a, I have, in fact, it's in here, the wall warp for this smaller battery that's in here. Um, in fact, I think it's only like three quarters of an amp charger. It's just a trickle charger. Um, I'll go over that battery here in a second because I'm actually going to try and swap it out. But um, it has an SAE connector. I just built a little SAE to XT60 adapter. So basically when you pop this open, you've got a little foam, keep everything in place. In here, I've just got all my various USB charging cables for all the various, you know, power blocks and portable power banks and um, phone chargers and all that kind of stuff, as well as if I did need a 2.1 amp or 2 amp charger, I could just use this in the 12 volt section if I had something that for whatever reason didn't want to run on QC3. Um, here's the little SAE2XT60 that I bought. This plugs into my little 
um, charger that I have, my little battery tender charger, um, and then that just plugs in there. So basically I just leave all that in there, pull that out of the way, and here's the battery I'm using. It is a battery tender brand. The only thing with this battery is I do believe this one is technically a starting battery. I think this is actually made to be a replacement for um, an ATV, lawnmower, motorcycle, stuff like that. Um, this does not say anywhere on it that it is a deep cycle battery. So I have not really cycled this, this battery a ton. Um, obviously I have used it a little bit in building this and using it, but I am going to swap this out for, I'm just going to get another um, lithium iron phosphate deep cycle um, battery. Then I believe they have the the ones like, you know, the ice hole power guys and the other, most of the other little small boxes like this I'll use. They have the little spade connectors on the top. Um, I think I can get one that's a 16 amp hour. Um, this technically is a little bit bigger than that, but again, I don't think this is really designed to be a deep cycle battery. So I am going to swap that battery out. Obviously the, the wiring and stuff was pretty simple. Um, the XT60 runs through this cable. It's got its own fuse, hooked straight to the battery. The rest of everything is all running off this 15 amp inline fuse and it runs down and then it basically it just piggybacks to all the other connectors. So super simple build, super fun. It was quick. Um, it's light. I mean, obviously Life Peel 4 batteries are crazy lightweight, not quite as lightweight as lithium iron phosphate, but that box is still considerably heavier than this box. This is awesome for, you know, just, if you just want to take something that's just got a little extra power for charging phones, tablets, laptops, whatever, um, obviously this one can do it. There is no solar charge controller in here, so technically right now this one is just a portable power box. What have you, obviously it would be very easy to just put uh, an XT60 connector onto a charge controller and charge that up with solar. So those are the first two that I built. Um, I'll give you a quick look here. I think I'm going to split this into a separate video since this one's already running a little long. Um, and I will go over this one. This is the one I just got done building. Um, so this is my latest. And I'm going to do a separate video on that. This thing is packing a lead time 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. Yes, they do fit in these mono price boxes. Um, it is incredibly tight in there, but it does also have a 10 amp solar charge controller tucked away in there. Um, as well as if you saw the speakers on the side, it is also a Bluetooth speaker. It has a 100 watt Bluetooth amp inside. Um, battery meter shunt. It's got a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter tucked on the back. So I'm going to go into this one in the next video just because this one's run a little long. So if you want to see my latest one, then pop on over and watch the next video. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks.